Good morning, this is Pastor David Charlton. This is my devotion for October the 22nd, 2020. Today we're going to be looking at the Lord's Prayer. And uh, also because it's still the morning, I'm going to do the devotion for the morning that comes in this little brochure, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families. Thank you for being with me today. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Then I will read the psalm for today. For God alone my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be greatly shaken. How long will all of you attack a man to batter him like a leaning wall, a tottering fence? They only plan to thrust him down from his high position. They take pleasure in falsehood. They bless with their mouths, but inwardly they curse. For God alone, my soul, wait in silence. For my hope is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my salvation and my glory. My mighty rock, my refuge is God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up, they are together lighter than a breath. Put no trust in extortion. Set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice I have heard this, that power belongs to God, and that to you, O Lord, belongs steadfast love. For you will render to a man according to his work. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And then a reading for the day from Matthew chapter 16. And the Pharisees and Sadducees came and to test Jesus, they asked him to show them a sign from heaven. He answered them, when it is evening, you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be stormy today, the sky is red and threatening. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. An evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. So he left them and departed. When the disciples reached the other side, they had forgotten to bring any bread. Jesus said to them, Watch and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And they began discussing it among themselves, saying, He brought no bread. But Jesus, aware of this, said, O oh, you of little faith, why are you discussing among yourselves the fact that you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive? Do you not remember the five loaves for the 5,000 and how many baskets you gathered? Or the seven loaves for the 4,000 and how many baskets you gathered? How is it that you fail to understand that I did not speak about bread? Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Then they understood that he did not tell them to beware of the leaven of bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Here ends the reading. Today, uh, the third day this week that I've done a devotion, we're going to look at the Lord's Prayer. And so today it's the third petition. What is the third petition? Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What does this mean? The good and gracious will of God is surely done without our prayer. But we ask in this prayer 
that it may be done also among us. When does this happen? God's will is done when he hinders and defeats every scheme and purpose of the devil, the world, and our sinful self, which would prevent us from keeping his name holy and would oppose the coming of his kingdom. And his will is done when he strengthens our faith and keeps us firm in his word as long as we live. This is his gracious and good will. What is Luther saying here? A couple things I want you to notice, uh, first of all, is again, Luther says that, of course, God's will is going to be done. But we pray in this prayer that his will will be done among us. Lord, may your will be accomplished in my life. That's the, the focus of these prayers. And then he also connects the, com- the doing of God's will with the coming of his kingdom and the hallowing of his name. So those three petitions are not really separate petitions, but instead they are the same petition spoken in a different way. God's will is done when his name is hallowed and his word is taught and lived in the world. So we're praying, God, help me to hallow your name. Help me to hear your word, believe it, and do it. But Luther also speaks here then about a battle that is going on within the world and within our lives. And he, he speaks of, of kind of a, um, an unholy trinity a which, against which God battles. And you and I are kind of caught in the middle of that battle. He says, God's will is done when he hinders and defeats every evil scheme and purpose of the devil, the world, and our sinful self, which would prevent us from keeping his name holy and would oppose the coming of his kingdom. That's very important for us to remember. Um, There is a battle going on within me and within you. The devil, the world, and my own sinful self doesn't want the will of God to be done. And so I'm praying, God, through your Holy Spirit, defeat the enemy that is within me. Overcome the devil, the world, and overcome my own sinful self so that your will will be done. In in this regard, I think of something that C.S. Lewis said. He said, in the very end, there's only two choices for us as human beings. Thy will be done or my will be done. Thy will be done means heaven. My will be done means hell. In fact, you could define it that way. Heaven is the place where God's will is done. That's why we say, may your will be done here on earth just as it is in heaven. Hell is the place where my will is done. If God would allow me to have my own way, it would lead to my own misery. And so I'm saying, God, not my will, but your will be done. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, there is a great battle that goes on in this world between good and evil. But the battle does not happen only outside of me, but it happens within me. As somebody said, the dividing line between good and evil runs through every human heart. And so, God, I I pray that you would send your Holy Spirit and defeat the forces of evil that are in my heart, which include the devil in, in the world, but my own sinful flesh. The part of me, Lord, that says, I want my own way. Lord, put that part to death. And raise up to new life the part that says, thy will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And then we say the Apostles' Creed. In this devotion, by the way, it has you say the creed first thing in the morning and right before going to bed at night. Saying the creed is another way that we remember our baptism. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And then the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Then we have two prayers for the morning. Almighty and merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, order our days and our deeds in his peace. Amen. Thank you for being with me today. Goodbye.